Hello my friends and welcome, let's go for the latest update from Ukraine, the situation near to the Bakhmut city. It's kind of interesting because Ukraine started to use lots of the artillery systems and the FPV drones to target the Russian vehicles in the area. Just recently Russia lost many of the tanks and infantry vehicles. We have the confirmation of those strikes from the drone cameras. In the future, I predict the movement of Ukrainian army towards Opetne because our guys already took the positions not far away from this village. Well, Opetne is not officially the part of the city, but actually it is. It is one settlement with the Bakhmut city. Also, the Russian attack airplane Suhoi Su-25 was downed recently just in the city, so Ukrainian army has some certain success over there, but I still wonder why Ukrainian army pushes so hard towards Bakhmut again. To understand my question, let's go to the deep state military maps and let's switch on the Russian defense lines. So the big aim of Ukraine is to get the Bakhmut city under control. By doing so, Ukrainian army will take this part of the crossroad together with the city. But what's the use of this military operation? Yes, it is the tactical success, but what is next? Let's say that the Ukrainian army takes this territory under full control, plus the defense lines of the self-proclaimed republics that were built for many years. It would be very hard, almost impossible, to penetrate those with the resources we have currently. My friends, again, I'm not the military expert or something, but I can do some analytics based on general logic. So Ukraine uses one of the best forces near to the Bakhmut, the Third Assault Brigade, together with the Western-made vehicles. The goal could be just tactical in taking the Bakhmut city. There is no strategic perspective in assaulting towards the Russian position in all of this area. Because the future general operation, let's say in taking Alchevsk or Luhansk from this direction, is not possible. The only possible variant that I see that Ukraine deflects the attention of the Russian army from the southern part, so Russia has to split their resources, their supply lines into two different directions, which are located very far away from each other. One is over here, the other one is over here. Which makes it absolutely difficult for the Russian army to counteract to Ukrainian assaults. That's the only logic from our military command perspective. So sometimes Ukraine pushes on the south, sometimes in the Bakhmut area, and Russia is unable to concentrate huge forces, for example, here. Which I think and Russia thinks is the main direction of Ukrainian counterattack. For today, I don't see the huge changes in the front lines, still waiting for the military map update, but I found some interactive map that will help us to understand the Russian defense on the south. Hopefully you'll understand it. So this is the vector of Ukrainian main attack towards Novoprokopivka, and here is where Bova village, and those are flashing the Russian defense lines. The tactical goal for Ukrainian army is to go to Tokmak, but at the same time it leads not just to the tactical success but to the strategic one, because after Tokmak there is Melitopol, and by gaining the control over it, Ukraine opens the door to reach Crimean Peninsula, also it cuts the Russian army in two pieces. Sorry it is in Ukrainian, but in general I may say to you, so the goal of Ukrainian army is to establish control over Melitopol and go to occupied Crimea. We understand that. This map is quite interesting, it is very interactive. So it is the first line of the Russian defense. Here Ukraine already penetrated it, but here it still exists. The second defense line of the Russian Federation was penetrated over here near to Verbova. The third Russian defense line is established over here near to Tokmak city. Well, potentially Ukraine may bypass the third Russian defense line by establishing control over Tokmak from the north direction, but we are unable to leave these defense lines behind the front lines, otherwise Russia may strike from this direction, so Ukraine should take control over this territory, before moving to Tokmak, unfortunately. Those were the minefields which Ukraine was able to get through and take control over Robotina. I will leave the link in the video description just below for this resource, so you may play with it. They describe what is the Russian defense looks like. 
As it was said before, during the springtime the Russian defense is just a straight line, but from what I see, this defense is quite robust. They also use so-called caponiers to hide their tanks and infantry vehicles. So unfortunately, I may come to the conclusion that Russia dig down to the ground very deep. So there is the high probability that Ukraine will not reach its goal on the south direction this year. That is why, as I told you, there is the other variant with a big landing operation in Crimea. Unfortunately, today we have the bad news from the Kharkiv region, the village of Groza, was under attack today by the Russian ballistic missile Iskander. None of the military facilities are established in this very small village with population a little bit more than 300 people. But today there was the funeral ceremony and many of the local citizens presented on it. The funeral was for a Ukrainian soldier who lost his life during this war, so he was from this village and many people came to share their respect for him and say the final farewell. And Russia just struck them with their ballistic missile. It's terrible. Many people just lost their lives. As it is reported for this hour, more than 50 people lost their lives and the rest are injured, almost all of the village. It is a terrible war crime that Russia does in Ukraine. My friends, I don't want to share the images from the place with you because you may understand that those are terrible. You may check out any kind of the news resources and you'll see them what Russia might do to the civilian population. So Russia is unable to fight on the front lines properly. That is why they attack Ukrainian civilians but Ukraine targets the Russian military. For example, we have quite a detailed video of the Russian peon artillery system. I'll show you some of the screenshot, the full video you may check out on my Telegram channel. So that is what happened to this system. The guys say that it was the Hammer strike, but I believe it was the artillery shell, maybe Excalibur because the kaboom is not that big as from the Heimers and also there is no shrapnel around. But today there was the strike on the Russian artillery using Heimers too. So this is the Russian Akatsa 152mm artillery and this is what happened to it. As you can see, wide explosion, lots of the traces from the shrapnel. So for sure it is the Heimers. Ukraine continued to get rid of the Russian artillery. As usual, we have artillery losses 1 to 4 compared to the Russian side. Today, Russia shared the video of the damaged Leopard 2 tank near to Robotina. The video was filmed by Ukrainian soldier, so Russia said that one more Leopard was targeted. But actually, this particular tank is lying there since June. It was definitely targeted by the Russian Lancet drone, but long time ago, and still Ukraine is unable to evacuate it from this region because it's very close to the Russian positions. It's basically unsafe to perform this operation right now. But our guys are already in those trenches. In the nearby future, they will push Russians away and will take this tank for repairs. Quite interesting news. The United States fighter jet, I believe it was F-16, targeted the Turkish unmanned air vehicle over Syria. As many articles are now saying, Turkey used this drone to target the Kurd positions in Syria. But Kurds got some of the backup from the United States of America. America supplied them with some of the weaponry and probably decided to help with this drone. The United States of America and Turkey are both NATO members and sometimes they have clashes in Syria because the interest are different. Hopefully this situation will be sorted out very fast. Luckily it was just a drone, no one was inside. We have the latest report for the vehicle losses for Russia and Ukraine since 30th of September, so for the last six days. Russia lost 88 of the vehicles, Ukraine 42, two times less than Russia. The Ukrainian army mostly loses the light armored vehicles or the vehicles without the armor. Russia loses artillery and tanks. As for the tanks, Russia lost 20 of them, Ukraine 5 for this period. As for artillery, Russia lost 14 of the artillery systems, Ukraine lost 4. This difference still amazes me of how Ukraine is capable to have those losses in offensive operations 
it's crazy. The problem is that for this specific strategy, we need more and more resources. This global war in Ukraine is all about resources, as I say to you many times already. So we need the constant supplies from our allies. But at the same time, there is no certainty in some of the countries of our allies. But I'm sure it will be overcome and Ukraine will be supported further. Today, Putin came out with his own version about the aviation accident with Prigozhin and other Wagner commanders. He said that it was internal explosion caused by grenades. He also proposed that Prigozhin and his friends were drunk or under something, so they start to throw grenades to each other. Probably that caused the wing separation which is located outside. Again, Putin is just spitting into the faces of his own people. 100% it was him responsible for that accident and with those speeches he actually confirms that. Because the reasons he says is way too unrealistic. One of the Russian main propaganda journalists and editor of the news, Margarita Simonyan, proposed to launch the nuclear strike inside the Russian territory over Siberia. That strike may potentially cause the disruption of the internet signal and some of the satellite's operation. Yes, seriously, she wants to target the Russian Siberia with a nuke, not the standard one, but the biggest Russia has. Already, the Siberian people of Russia started a petition to call her responsible for extremism. But she has the defense from Putin and his circle, so she will not be imprisoned, for sure. But in any way, she definitely called to nuke Russia. Well, I would support that move, but not in Siberia. There is the beautiful nature. Maybe closer to Putin? No? According to the latest images, Russia moved out most of their ships to the other port. Moreover, they will create the new port in so-called Abhazia, the territory that they took from Georgia. They are planning to finish the preparations till 2025. Analyzing the Russian resources, they say that Ukraine went to the massive counterattack near Tuklashivka and Andreevka, which Ukraine liberated not long time ago, so the vectors are coming to this place Russia resists as usual. Well, actually, Russia lost the capabilities for attack operations. The only place where they may still assault is near to Kupinsk. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, you may check out some links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of this YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.